Hi and welcome guys to a new episode of The Nomadic Parents. My name is George. My name is Anselia. And we are currently at a cabin more than 1000 meters over the sea level in the Norwegian mountains. And we've decided to do a little special episode. So I'm quite excited for it. A little extra episode. And for those of you joining in the video, you can see us sitting here with our nose, a pen and tea and chocolate. So we're in for like cozy time. Absolutely. And during this episode, we will talk you through some of the learning we've been through the last couple of weeks, because we're currently recording a series project for the Norwegian television about the cabins around in the Norwegian mountains. So we're actually on and about for over a month in the mountains with our little baby girl. And in this episode, we intend to share what we've been learning. And we want to go through the typical things that we go through, which is... <laughs> I, can, I don't think I can remember. Yeah, it's sleep, development, physical development, and... Cognitive yeah. and parenting challenge. Yeah, well, let's, let, let's get this episode started. In this podcast, we share month-by-month -month updates from my daughter's upbringing. From birth and further into her life on the road, welcome to our new podcast, The Nomadic Parents. Well, if anyone here is a bit of crackling or sippling behind him, that's us just eating chocolate. Uh, we're in for a blast. We're sitting in a cabin that is um, just by a huge lake in the middle of the mountains. And just to give you some context, there is no road in the nearby 40 to 50 kilometers. Yeah, so you have to walk here. We use several days to walk here. And we've currently been hiking for two weeks approximately. And this cabin is actually part of the DNT cabin system in Norway. And they own 600 cabins all over Norway. And if you, you're a member, you can get a key. And this, it's the same key for all the cabins. We, we should get back to that. It, it's quite an extensive topic. And I think you have to be careful with that chair. You're making a lot of noise there. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, where do we want to get started? I mean, this is a special episode and... I think first of all, maybe just share a bit of... First of all, I think I can start talking since you're enjoying a piece of chocolate. All right, <laughs> go for it then. But yeah, our idea was to share some of our the takeaways we have from this trip, what we learn and how we're making this possible because it's not the... Uh, sorry for your chair, guys. It's not a given that you can take a nine-month-old baby girl up to the mountains for several weeks absolutely not that that's i think we thought it to be easier than we have realized i mean it's not too challenging with the right know-hows but uh, definitely challenging if you're not used to being in the mountains i think i want to save that for for a little bit into because it is a quite it's a hard question to answer on the spot but i have something ready yeah. but first of all i think if, if you're tuning on first time into our podcast, you should go back on previous episode and listen because we've been doing this podcast for every single month since our girl Sakira has been born. Yeah. And we intend to continue to do it every month. Um, but we're right between month nine and ten now. So month ten is still coming up. This is just a bonus episode. That's right. And, and for, uh, for you that are already following along, Thank you so much for listening in. We really appreciate everyone tuning in. We haven't really, I think I wouldn't consider that this podcast would get that much traction early on. I think it's really nice that people are listening in. Yeah. It makes me proud and it makes me really inspired to continue on yeah. and share. And uh, I hope that we are giving some useful tips and that you guys keep in mind that this is our first time also being parents. So we're also like, learning by doing absolutely and there's uh i mean uh, we we definitely have shared stories or given out tips that might not work out for everyone mm -hmm. and that's just us you know learning on the way and 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 as you said being parents for the first time we 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 hit a lot of challenges we also got a lot of other video projects going out as we mentioned we're doing this hiking series for the norwegian television 
that one is in Norwegian, but you can actually go on their webpage and Google it up and find it. So definitely check that out. It's going to be called Gullnöckelen, which translates as much as the golden key. Yeah, that's a, at least our idea. So we're hoping that it's going to be called that. <laughs> I think it will be called that. Yeah. And you get the golden key from the DNT cabin system when you visited a hundred cabins. So that's the whole concept of the series where we're going to take Sakira through three seasons. So the series is going to be divided into three seasons. And during those three seasons, we're going to visit a hundred of these cabins and tell the stories of the local mountains, meet people. We're meeting a lot of really exciting and really talented people on the way that- Walking a lot. And walking a lot, and walking a lot. So. Well, obviously, we'll share a bit more about this series during this podcast episode. How many kilometers do you think we've walked already? Well, let's say we've been on the go for two weeks now. I'd say we already have buckled down around uh, 150 kilometers, something around that. My legs is definitely feeling it. The only positive thing, oh, not the only positive thing, but the most positive thing for me is that so most of these cabins have a... Um, provision storage where you can like take stuff and you pay for it um, through an app or write it down on a piece of paper and you send the paper and you we can eat as much as we want because we have like because <laughs> we like burn so many calories that we can eat as much as we want without guilty conscious absolutely yeah that's always but but that's always something of the nice things when you're out hiking being active is not being so conscious about what you're eating because you know that you're going to burn in the way anyway yeah well, why don't we start uh, on that specific topic, the cabins, the environment, you know, I mean, for most of the people listening into this, it will be their first interaction ever to this system. Yeah. And I think it's nice to use a couple of minutes to share what it is all about. The paranoia kicking in. <laughs> it's just the wind. I'm uh, just thinking of something, maybe someone is coming. But yeah, so it's called... The Norske Turistforeningen, which in short is DNT. And when you become a member, you get access to all these cabins. You also get access to them without being a member, but you get a much better price. And, and as you said initially, those cabins, 600 of them, are spread all around the Norwegian mountain. Yeah, so it can be inside a fjord, it can be in a forest on top of a mountain, but they're mostly not ac- accessible. Uh, with car so you have to hike to them and then you're also able to hike from cabin to cabin to cabin and and that's the beauty of it that's why most people are using it that most of them are located in remote mountain areas and as you mentioned some of them are by the lake by the fjord and those are more easily accessible by for for families with children but most people using the organization are using it for the hype of walking through mountains that Mm -hmm. On the other side, it would be really impossible to cross into. Yeah, and especially because of uh, the weight of food. So, for example, we uh, are hiking now for two weeks and we are eating. We have been hiking. Yeah, we've been hiking for two weeks. We're going to hike much longer. And uh, we've been eating from the food storages and buying food from there. And it just makes our backpacks so much lighter. We have literally brought nothing more than a couple of nuts and some tea bags and some extra treats for the way. But those are also kind of running out now and we're filling up again from the storage. Mm. And I think just this system of available cabins in the mountains with food storage, so easily accessible with so many good routes by far makes Norway the best hiking country in the world. Yeah. And it's not just for Norwegians. You can come here to tourists and use the cabins. And We have met a lot of Norwegians, Germans, Frenchmen along the way. And obviously, this is not the first time for us doing it. We've been, I've been doing it pretty much all my life. Mm. You have been joining me more and more. And we've been doing it a lot together. And, and I mean, to be honest, there is still a lot of places in the world where we can go and hike. So I'm not going to say that I know all the places, but I know a few. Yeah. And and in South America or, or Asia or North America, it's way harder to access the mountains. And I just want to point out that this is a system based on trust. Like most of the cabins are unlocked. And even the key is more a symbol rather than actually for protection because you can easily pick the lock. And um, 
the standard is really high. It's not like a shed. It's a full on house with a gas stove and a wooden fire pit and beddings. Lots of them have now installed like USB charging and solar panels. So they're constantly improving. And also the organization itself is developing all the time. Yeah. And it's the same standard on all the cabins. So you know what you're coming to. You're coming to a really nice mattress with duvet and a pillow. Absolutely. And, yeah. yeah. But enough about that. I think if you're curious, uh, check out the NT, the Norwegian Hiking Association. Yeah. Uh, you can get member online and also, of course, we would really appreciate if you tune in and watch that series once it published. Mm-hmm. It probably at the point you're listening is, is already online. Yeah, it's but, gonna be fun. But it's been it's been a weird idea, you know. We got this idea like half a year ago, a bit more. Where I'm, I I remember I asked you, wouldn't would you be keen spending our summer doing this project? And since then, it's kind of the idea has been developing. So I'm I'm really happy that we're pulling it through. Yeah. And I think it says a lot about you as a character. I'm, so, uh, or do you, you finish? No, I, I think it says a lot about you as a character. Like, I'm I'm really proud of you as my wife, mm-hmm. always jumping on these weird adventures. You know, most most women of your standard. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> that's, a, that's a high standard. And say like, oh. You may sound posh. No, yeah, but be like, yeah, it's a good idea, but I, I'd prefer being on a beach or something during my summer holidays. Summer holidays. Right, right. Whilst you're here spending, like, hiking mm. four or five hundred kilometers with me in the summer, it's been mostly rainy and misty, yeah. and you love it. So so I'm 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 so proud of you and Thank very you. happy. Thank you. Well, it helps a lot that you're carrying the weight. <laughs> Most of the weight. <laughs> And we're back, guys. Until we manage to get Sakira back to sleep. Well done. Thank you. And uh, yeah, where were we? Yeah. Thank you for the compliment. You're welcome. And something else I wanted to add is that this is actually some of the, our first content in our native language, Norwegian. So I'm very excited for to show a different personality online. Absolutely, because we've done all, almost all our content in English, so yeah. it will be cool to get out in Norwegian. It was, there was like a first period where we were already confused and started talking a lot in English. We're like, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you, you asked me in the very start what the biggest challenge yeah. has been so far. And I think it's about time to get into the purpose of this episode in terms mm-hmm. of how it's been being so long in the mountains and literally everyone we meet goes do you have a toddler that is nine months with you how is that possible yeah and they kind of expect us to just be up and down and then we tell them no we're being we're gonna be going for over a month yeah what it's a lifestyle yeah absolutely so biggest challenge and this might sound as a surprise because it's actually not something major 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 okay but for me biggest challenge has been the feeling of giving her enough playtime mm-hmm. as we're carrying her in the baby carrier most of the days and we're talking like minimum four or five hours walking yeah that's you know and that's when if you walk it like straight through yeah and, but a baby can't be in the baby carrier for five hours without stretching the leg and crawling a bit so definitely the days where it's been like windy rainy cold and you can't really dedicate half an hour to play in the grass Mm. because then everyone's wet and freezing that's been that's been challenging mentally for me because i think about her all the time when i'm hiking i'm like oh she'd probably be so tired of just Mm. sitting there true and it's like an important time in her life. It's when she's learning to walk and perfecting how to crawl. So it's important to give them enough time on the floor. Absolutely. So, But I think we've been solving it quite nicely by waking up early, having some time in the cabin to play around, putting in rest days when needed. Mm. And also, put, especially you, you know, like being so been so good to have you stressing to get early out and get back <laughs> early into the cabins yeah. um, because that actually gives us quite a few few hours 
at the in the afternoon to, to play in the cabin as well yeah because uh, it was a hard time we had a hard time when we first started this uh, project and uh, we we're, were really tired in the beginning so we would sleep so many hours which ended up us hiking from the cabins very late yeah um, but now we're we're in it we, we've turned it around eventually but also it's not been our blame 100 because considering we had a drone breaking and having to go back to a city two times unplanned to get the drone fixed. You, you'll hear more about that in the series. If you're intrigued, you should go back and watch it. For me, one of the harder things has been uh, the sleeping. Because it's so different from at home, which also brings us into one of our four topics. You know, sleep, physical, mental development and challenges. And for the sleep, we have to either sleep on a mattress on the floor, like pull the mattress from the bed on the floor. But normally she sleeps in my bed and she started to move so much in her sleep, (laughs) so much. And I wake up from everything and she's like banging her head in the into like the edge of the bed into the wall and going like dun, 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 sounds dun. like she has uh, inherited quite a bit of sleeping yeah. habits from me mm, i can yeah. also turn around and sleep and just like exactly. and really go for a hard punch <laughs> so that's been the hardest thing for me let's try to solve it tonight i've already offered you that i can sleep with her I'm, yeah i'm excited about n- that nothing wakes me up i'm excited about that i hope it's gonna be an amazing night for all three. <laughs> I think so. I think so. Well, I really wanted to talk, a l- use this bonus episode with you to talk a little bit about where we're heading with this podcast. I know we haven't really decided for ourselves, but you know, soon a year has passed. Mm-hmm. We're going into the last couple of months of this first year. And I, I really think that I, I'd like to continue this podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's been really fun, to okay. be honest. Yeah. I don't know about you. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, you like it too? That's good to hear. I like it too. <laughs> <laughs> I like it too, I'm still sitting here. <laughs> well, well, it was my idea. Yeah, it was your idea too. That That's that's really true. And um, I was thinking that maybe we could like gradually have it move over more into a parental plus child podcast. Yeah, so I agree. not something that is just about like toddler stage and mm. how to I mean we're we're always sharing from a traveling perspective and mm. I think that's what most of our listeners are interested in. Mm. Uh, the traveling perspective and I think it, it can be really cool to involve Sakira more and more after a year more. She'll have some stage time for sure. I think so. I think so. I think it's a good idea. Let's just see where it's heading. Absolutely. Or do you feel a need to like land on something now? No, no, n- not in the podcast life. Absolutely not. But I was just intrigued to hear your thoughts. Well, it feels like kind of a tradition now, like to celebrate her her like one month older birthday, semi birthday, and uh, I kind of like sitting down and reflect, like because it's our time as well to reflect on what's happened and. How she's changed. All right. I'll, I'll take you on that word that we'll continue. Okay. <laughs> All right. You, you have quite a few points to share from going into this hike. And, and just to give some context, we, we obviously been traveling consistently the last pretty much all her life so yeah. far we we just came back from half a year in Ecuador mm. or not half a year, four and a half months, yeah. but, but quite a long time. And, and if you haven't listened to those episodes, go back. Uh, you can hear all about our experience from traveling across the pond and mm. uh, long flight journeys with a with a young child. And 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 then we pretty much came came back to Norway and um, packed our things. We're a couple of weeks at home with our parents, and then went out for the summer journey. Yeah. But what do we, we we did a couple of things before we headed out here. Yeah, you want me to talk about them? That was kind of like giving you a word to shine. <laughs> Where's the physical ball? <laughs> we need like a staff to show who's going to talk now. Okay, thank you. I'm holding a pen now. He gave me a pen. We, uh, 
worked a ton. No, you worked a ton. And um, we had a blast with your parents. We slept uh, at Vesna's, your hometown, which is always a really nice time because your parents love Sakira and they help a lot. And then we visited it. We went on like a round journey in Norway to visit some friends before this hike. We went on a little marathon just like that to yeah. visit friends and and I really enjoyed that. I mean, apart from staying with both of mine and your parents, which which has been like quite a while since, it, it's been really nice to also get refreshed on, you know, what tips they have to share. Mm-hmm. And I think that's that's something that i would recommend anyone if you're traveling a lot with your baby or if you are at home like use those times to not only go for an hour yeah but like stay over with your parents yeah, stay a I couple feel of days like I, we kind of owe them to get a relationship with sakura as well because if we're constantly traveling they don't really have the chance to bond with her but i also see a lot like when uh, when we're spending time with them uh, a couple of days and saying I, I I see a lot of you know their parenting styles mm. coming back and it gives me a lot of respect for the way they raised me and yeah. you know so yeah it makes me proud and and it's nice to see and I, I think I owe them you know that kind of everything uh, attribution <laughs> attribution nice. of you know to, you you can truly see that your parents have been really good parents yeah. when you see them with your child taking that back so but yeah we went on a friend's road trip Mm -hmm. down to south norway to oslo and visited a lot of places where we haven't been before yeah among them you know our good friends sunivan sundra yeah in fredrikstad and also suniva leilan in larvik Larvik. and on the martin rambod in oslo which are pretty much our cousins yeah Uh, and godparents yeah to to sakira and all of them, like, wow, so cool to see how much love they give to Sakira. Yeah. And I forgot, right before that, I went to Bergen to visit uh, your brother and my sister. Absolutely, yeah. And and all of them are just, you know, having a big chunk of Sakira. All yeah. of them love them so much. So that's that's so nice to know that we have so many people around mm. us that care so much. And... and we talked about this the last episode, but she was like, she had some kind of anxiety uh, when meeting new people in month eight and that's totally passed now she's super happy to see people and which makes me also very relieved because i was a bit worried like is this gonna is this gonna be the rest of her year like screaming in people's faces <laughs> but especially on the martin rambod they are I, I would feel safe straight away to give them secure like a week or so to take care of. They are oh. full of love and it's really nice they to see. They all are so full of love and it's really nice to see them all uh, like in their habitats because we were visiting and also Sandra and Sunuva, they also have a baby. So it was really nice to meet Nori. Yeah. yeah, they are almost the same age, so... It, okay. But it's, yeah, enough about that. But but, start it, you. but yeah. it's it's been nice, you know, going having that kind of moments before we head into solid solitude <laughs> in, in into the mountains. Yeah, now you're only stuck with me and the crying baby. And <laughs> and so what are your biggest takeaways? Like I think let's go into a bit of practical things. That's what people are keen on, you know, yes. tuning into this episode. How do you do one month away from every normal uh, away from running water, warm water, and like into the wilderness, basically. Well, to start off, we did a couple of test runs to check our equipment before we went on this trip. And I'm very glad we did. Uh, we're going to come back a bit to equipment. But uh, we tested the... What do you call the carry system, like the baby backpack? I'd say baby carrier. Yeah, the baby carrier. That's like, actually um, the right word, yeah. Is it yeah. called a baby yeah, carrier? it's called a baby carrier. And, and, and just, I know you have a lot to say about the equipment, and I'll let you get the word because it's not my alley. <laughs> but the baby carrier is something that I want to really highlight. If you are a person that likes to walk, likes <laughs> to hike. You really love that one. Then, then really invest in a good baby carrier. And I mean, we've been lucky because partnering with Osprey in this project mm. has obviously given us like top of 
top of the market access but but they aren't cheap but you get what you pay for because yeah. that and baby carrier from Osprey is top notch and it's gonna last you for the next 20 years I mean I'm not hopefully not gonna carry her 20 years <laughs> but we but have it, lots of babies it's such <laughs> a good uh, backpack it has so good storage solutions and she is really comfortable there yeah, and exactly. dry like the the dry kit the cover the rain cover is so well made yeah but we did some, two test runs on it and after the first hike she actually puked on top of the mountain i'm not sure if it was because of the carrier but she didn't quite understand how to hold her head in a carrier because she's been in the what do you call like the front thing where you have her i don't know but like the the harness yeah baby the harness, harness. And there you don't have to hold your head. So it was like a transition to make her understand the baby carrier. I think that was that was a good shout to do a test run because you can obviously just see is it working like we expected to. But also mm. that kind of first experience for her being on a short hike. Yes. Getting to know what she's running yeah. into. I think that would be quite... I mean, it wouldn't have shocked me. But if we were the, about to head a month into the mountains and she puked like first hour in, I think you would have been vouching for a turnaround. Yeah. And like, imagine her from zero experience to six hours in the carrier. It's a bit brutal. But and also we noticed, for example, that we needed thicker gloves and uh, sunglasses and stuff like that. Yeah. But jump us into the equipment, your little equipment list. What are your biggest takeaways? What do you have to have? Because, I mean, being in the mountain is all about packing light. Yes. You want as little as possible, as little as possible weight, and strap down everything which you don't need. Yes. So let's start with uh, food and beverages. You need a baby bottle. Like, she has a bottle with a straw. She can't really drink from our bottles, so that was really crucial that she had her own bottle. And then I brought a small Tupperware box to mix her porridge in and also to have her porridge in as uh, her lunch. Are you going to show off the stuff? I, I, I was just thinking I just grabbed a couple of things, but... Yeah, you're showing it off a video. <laughs> but where is the... Lid? No, the first thing you mentioned. What? That's it. You mentioned bottle. Yeah, and Tupperware. No, uh, I was thinking about something else. And then we bought... Oh, yeah. This is something you can mention at and the very end. I can already mention it. So well, okay, that's... so this is the bottle for those of you tuning in on video. And I mean, Spotify is now launching that you can watch videos on Spotify. So if you're not listening to this podcast on Spotify, I'd recommend you to go in there because then you can at any time swipe up and see the video yeah. instead of just audio. That's really convenient. We also have this on YouTube. Of course, you can always watch it on YouTube, but this is the bottle. And this has been really good to take because she really managed to drink from it yeah. well. And it has this little cute straw. And she drinks a lot of water. And then we just bring this kind of Tupperware. small Tupperware to put her day food in. Yeah. And uh, that's almost all the food we're carrying, which is her porridge. We brought some porridge from the supermarket because there's no porridge on the cabins. But just one small ba bag, like 500 grams. Yeah, it lasts gram. for a month. But, um, and then we have her favorite snacks. But, but before we jump into the snacks, I think you should mention um, breastfeeding contra bottle feeding oh, and yeah. this kind of thing. I think it's a big issue because some people can't breastfeed or mm. can't breastfeed all the meals. And I mean, we're she's pretty much eating like normal food with us all the time mm. but, but, breastfe that, but breastfeeding, breastfeeding works really well for you yeah uh, yeah and i think i'm not an expert so i'm not sure and i also haven't like put myself in this position but i think if you if you have a, ba a formula fed baby and you need the sterilization and the bottles and the formula and everything that comes with not breastfeeding i think this hike would be a lot harder yeah, I hate to break it to you, but mm -hmm. breastfeeding is a must if you're going to take a toddler or, on but I long mean, hikes. Also, when the, uh, the toddler or the baby is nine months, you can also just feed them. So you probably would solve it, like manage to solve it. But let's jump into snacks. I mean, 
the one of the things is like if you bring your baby on such a long hike as we're doing yeah. uh, you can't bring a lot of toys so we have like two favorite toys a little rattle and a little uh, car. car that makes she got the... from trina we forgot to mention that we met trina in oslo as well yeah. sorry about that trina <laughs> but also lots of love to you yeah <laughs> but anyway, we we have that little baby car, the mm. toy car that she got from Trina. But then all the cabins have lots of random things. So there is always something to play with. Mm -hmm. But we brought this very amazing snack, a couple of bags of them. Yeah. Because they're really lightweight. They take a bit of space, but they're not like... This one there's bag no is weight. 30 gram. And it's just made from corn. It's perfectly shaped for them to hold and it melts in the mouth. So it's it... like a cheese toodle, yeah. but without the like greasy cheese. Yeah. Pretty much cheese toodle for baby. Yeah. And and that's been, a re everyone we show it to that has a baby goes goes nuts about them. Yeah. They're really cool. And I, I would assume that they have them in, in different countries. So just, just Google cheese toodles for babies. <laughs> You know, cheese toodles is not thing outside Scandinavia. All right. How do you want to explain it then? Like really big, chunky, popped mice, fluffy, foamy, foamy worm, corn worm, <laughs> corn dog, <laughs> but made of air. All right. What more do yeah. you got down and your list? And then that's the stuff for the food. And then obviously we have her rain clothes, a duvet jacket, down jacket. Yeah, but that that that's really like not much clothes. No, you can boil it down to two jumpers or or two suits. Yeah, woolen ones. Yeah, a couple of socks, two sweaters, two pants, yeah. just in case one of them gets wet. Yeah, and then rain clothes, down jacket. That combo is really important. Mm. And my parents were really cute, gifting us a down jacket for babies and North Nepal. Face one. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but and yeah, that's shoes and gloves and uh, a beanie. Absolutely, because I mean, for us, it's kind of Norwegian summer. Even though we we don't dress up like winter, we we're hiking, you know, and sometimes in t-shirts and and just thin pants. But we're walking all, all the day, so yeah. we 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 produce a lot of heat. Whilst if the baby's just sitting around there in the wind. You really need to pack them up like it's mm. winter. They get really cold. And like even now, looking outside the window, you can see patches of snow. So it's not very warm here in Norway. And that's about it. And then the only extra thing we brought is diapers. And we chose to bring a mix of cloth diapers and paper diapers. I think you did a genius mix there. I think you just really combined the best of the both worlds. Because Thank you. we brought three traditional uh, cloth, diapers. cloth diapers and we've been using them consistently since her birth pretty mm -hmm. much we've bought very little diapers yeah. uh, mostly using cloth diapers and, and washing them and, and actually for this kind of hike they're revolutionary because you go kind of old school you go back to the mm -hmm. 80s like it was before you can't carry a lot of things with you so those cloth diapers, you just go on to a river where we are and you wash them. Yeah, and then they dry during the day and then you have them next day again. And then we have some uh, single-use diapers, which we put on her before going hiking. Because you don't want any leaks on the backpack. We don't want to be outside changing. So yeah. during those five, six hours with a fresh diaper from leaving the cabin to reaching the next cabin, mm. she can literally see there and pee. Yeah. Sit there and pee, and she isn't really like she never. So far, she has never pooped during daytime. Yeah, she does that when she's in like indoor, a bit more comfortable position. She likes to stand. <laughs> so I think that's pretty much it for equipment. Yes, that's running it. it down. Small toys, mm. as little as close as possible, but consider that you have a change of two for everything. Yeah, outer layer of rain clothes, down jacket. Mm. some some favorite snacks something that is only hers and that you can allow yourself to carry for the whole length of the trip yeah and and that's that's about it that's a really good summary Georg. thank you uh, i'm i'm actually quite famous in my friend group for doing <laughs> summaries yes and bullet point lists Absolutely. and organizing stuff i do have a memory of steel <laughs> Well, talking about uh, metals, yeah. uh, I have a funny story about the diamond. Okay. Well, there was this guy I met once. Um, 
som koll Tryggve Working in Stavanger at the, the Stavanger um, pretty much like the Bauhaus reunion project so it's like EU funded project where he works between different cities and and I sat down with him for a couple of meetings and, and he I told him that we, we were pregnant and we were yeah. about to have our kid and he said like I, I just have this one tip to share with you and I thought it was just such an amazing tip I keep on telling it to people I, there isn't much you can do uh, just be the best version of yourself as a father and keep in mind that they are just diamonds, rough diamonds coming into this world. Yeah. And you can do nothing more than than to fight, what is it called? Like, like polish. Polish early. down the roughest edges. You can't reshape them. Oh. So that was a really nice saying. And I've been thinking about it quite a bit. Like the polish down the edges so they don't hurt themselves or people around them. That's right. So they don't hurt themselves or people around them. So I, I think that's a really nice saying and I try to think about them whenever I see her um, her kind of attitude personality. and personality shining yeah. through more and more. And then I'm thinking, okay, I'm not going to try to change it or, or try to inflict any other behavior mm-hmm. on her. But I'm just going to try to direct a bit. Do you feel like you're already seeing some of her personality? Yeah, I do. I do. And that, and that actually brings us into our next... Uh, next topic which I think we can cover and also we'll cover more during the next episode yeah. that's a couple of things shining through now and, and obviously unrelated to hiking or not hiking uh, one thing that I that I can really see is her ability to speak she's really rapidly <laughs> improving now and want to express things it's really funny because I don't know if it said this on the podcast but the meaning of the name Sakira is actually uh, she or he who speaks the one uh, the one that speaks the one that speaks so yeah but, she's but it's living com- up to the name yeah it's coming true now and Lola is the fin- definitely yeah, been, being her true. first word I think <laughs> if there is nothing changing within the next week <laughs> she's like every time she sees our dog Lola she goes Lola 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 that's right <laughs> trying so hard she can't do that <laughs> yet yeah, so she's like oh, uh, oh uh. <laughs> it's really good it's she the loves same sound. Lola it's the and same actually sound. this month she also learned how to pet Lola because until now she's only been like pulling Lola's hair and like yeah like pure brute force but also and now, joy like pure yeah, yeah like it's like pure excitement yeah, yeah. and now I like been all like week the last week's like pet like this like pet her like like clapper yeah clapper clapper, clapper. <laughs> and now she's doing it yeah she's doing it she's getting it and yeah. and another thing that I see in her personality and that's probably me pushing a bit towards that direction because I love it too but she is a true climber like the, she loves climbing way more than crawling. Yeah. Everything, everything that she can climb up on. And now, just a couple of days ago, we practiced cl- all of these cabins around there. Have these beautiful old school pillowed benches yeah. around in the cabin. So they they make for an amazing playground because you can hold on to everything, climb onto everything. And I'm teaching her how to climb on top of a bench. <laughs> And also climb down again, yeah, and we important. did it. We did it for an hour yesterday, and she got so excited when she did it like three times consecutively after each other, by her own will and by her own understanding. At at some point, she was just standing on the floor, looking at me with both hands in the air, like yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's really was... funny to see how she's doing everything for the first time and she's like really understanding it now and like, excited yeah. excited when she understands something yes so we're we're seeing a lot of personality it's hard to define because I haven't had any other examples mm. of this species to, <laughs> to compare with but uh, but some uh, like reference points so I think one of the things I really see with Sakira is that she is not going to be a careful kid. She's like constantly bumping her head without complaining all day and like uh, hitting her like feet and legs and stuff and she doesn't complain. So I think... I think that's a nice treat though. Like I prefer it that way. Yeah. 
yeah. even though you know you'll end up with some scratches, than someone that is just constantly mm-hmm. nagging. Yeah, I agree. She's very independent it already. It fits our lifestyle. And that is something I think is important to share in this podcast because we are constantly on the move. Mm. We're traveling. We're moving places. Like if you've been listening into this the last year, we're every time we're doing this podcast, we're in a new location. Yeah. And and she's adapting really well. Yeah. What, what, how do you think we... Did she have any choice? Or, or do you know... What do you think we do that makes her comfortable constantly being on the road no, no. i think as a baby you really only like what's really important for you is probably your parents and as long as you have your parents oh now she's waking up again <laughs> uh, you're gonna be fine and now she needs me let's have her out for the last couple of minutes thank you hello oh missy did you have something you wanted to say no forced words on the podcast, but as you can see, she has been growing quite a bit again. She is now almost my upper body length, and she has been come a very good stander. She, she's all. I think next episode we're gonna do, we might have our first steps, and that that's one of the uh, last topics I think we could be covering is uh, training. <coughs> Training standing, training yeah. walking. Yeah. Uh, do you have any tips to share on how we're doing it? I mean, your your dad was a rocket. Nine months walking. My dad said that he ran around when he was nine months. I'm not sure if it's true, but my dad's not very known for exaggeration. <laughs> so it might be. But um, we have been giving her lots of opportunities to stand and helping her to stand a lot. And then we also try to just gently hold her in the hands and let her explore, like, if that's walking or just standing. I might as well... I, I might admit that I push the development of the diamond a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I do kind of force her to stand more and more, and I also try to, like, drag her along for steps and walking. Yeah. So I think just spending time... On You're the floor. Grinding the diamond. <laughs> Spending time on the floor is important and, yeah. and not just a couple of minutes, but actually like half an hour, an hour a day yeah. with breaks. But here you and there. know, like we're not experts and all babies are different. This has been working very well for us to like see her developing her leg muscles. But a lot of pe- babies don't walk before they're one and a half years old. Absolutely. Um, well, I think we can sum up this episode with uh, some of the nicer takeaways from going on this hike with her. Absolutely, go for it. We talked about already the some of the negative aspects, which is our bad conscience for keeping her in the carry for so long. But for me, one of the nicest things about spending this time with both you, Georg, but also Sakira is that I really feel like there's no distractions, especially from our digital work life and technology, social media. We're here in a cabin without electricity, without running water. It's just us, and it really makes the perfect environment to bond with you guys. Yeah, it's been nice just like focusing about us uh, all day long from morning to evening coping with our challenge and and I remember when we watched uh, our good friend Snorre having his first child and second child he like really disappeared from the radar for a while mm. and I can really understand it because there is suddenly something in the inner family that takes all attention like now taking all attention so it's it's nice to be away yeah. for a while. Yeah. And also this time is so precious that I'm really happy we have this opportunity to like go offline. <laughs> I think we're getting to an end here because there's someone that craves a lot of attention. But I think I just want to thank everyone for listening in. Yeah. Um, it's not always been easy to find space and room to do this podcast with this 
girl hanging around and I'm excited for what this podcast is becoming during the next months. Mm. What are, what are you what are you most excited about during the fall when, when we get home and we spend a couple of months in our apartment? Like in terms of us three? Yeah. Or like just, just in terms of life. I, like I feel kind of bad for saying it, but I'm kind of a bit excited for her to start in kindergarten. Yeah. Yeah, but that's that's a fair thing. I think a lot of people traveling around like Because, us are not so into kindergarten yeah. you know kindergarten might not be a thing for yeah. for normal people and regular people it is a thing mm -hmm. and uh, like we have a lot of projects going on and it's becoming increasingly harder to work and to like give her the attention i feel like she deserves so i'm happy to put her in kindergarten and we found a lovely kindergarten with like a forest and everything where she can have other kids in which are one year old and play all day. But we'll, we'll, we'll not have her in kindergarten all the time for the coming years. I think kindergarten will be a thing for the next half year and then probably mm. also when we're going to North Norway for a new property there, that's also going to be a thing. But then there's going to be quite a few times as well where we just have her at home yeah, or traveling yeah. with her. And I don't think we're going to have her five days a week in the kindergarten. But it's nice to like... Maybe three me, days. You mean week. F five days? Five yeah, days five a week. Days a week. Yeah. I think maybe it's going to be three sometimes around that. And it's just going to be nice to have those extra hours to do other stuff. I want to give her all my commitment when she's around. Yeah. No, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward for a more regular work life for a couple of months, mm -hmm. renting some kind of uh, co working space or just being at home. Going dedicated core hours, nine to nine to two, having like five hours of concentration and then being home with her, uh, fully focused on playtime with her. Yeah. Um, that's something I'm looking forward to. And I think that's a topic that is important to talk about because most, many people watching this go, oh, I want to be traveling with my kid. I want to be all, all on and about all the time. But also it can be challenging being outside of the normal routines True. of the life around you yeah. so so actually for a couple of months we are gonna dip back into traditional um, life traditional life to have give her the opportunity to be in kindergarten and uh, but i think even though like if you're traveling somewhere else you can always find some daycare absolutely. and then it's just or more... community based i mean yeah our time in ecuador proved that You can just find the right community and that community mm. will provide some mm. sort of daycare or kindergarten for you. Yeah, and even in Ecuador they have a day daycare, but I feel like we wanted to use all our time available with her at that time. Yeah, so I think we're solving all these challenges very well, especially today also. We had a huge discussion about one thing. I won't go into what it was, but I think we solved that really well. Mm. It was nice. I mean... Years ago, we would probably have gone into a quite hard argument. And it's good to see that we're also growing up more and more and solving things in a more adult way. It's all about communication, isn't it? It's all about communication and uh, compromise, I guess. There definitely is a lot of compromise. <laughs> and with that, I think we're going to compromise with ending this episode. Or do you have something else you want to add? No, nothing more than just, uh, you know, if, you, if there is anything you want to ask us about, feel free to drop DM on Instagram or, or we, we might as well start, start an X account soon for the different podcasts. I think X is a diff really good platform for having people engage with the podcasts. And, and, and I also have a couple of other podcasts that I'm doing. You've been considering doing other podcasts. If you haven't listened in, you should check out Nomadic Business Insight, which has been running for quite a few months now. We're doing episodes every second week there with, mm. with a lot of interesting guests, both from our client side and different businesses, partners, yeah, friends. Yeah, I feel like that podcast gives a really good insight into like the business world and uh, 
you are discussing a lot of no. topics which you can't find other places or like your view is very invaluable no valuable <laughs> <laughs> thank you no I'm, i'm i'm just trying you know it's, it's fun to share from a young person's perspective who has built several companies yeah. already and working you know been working on our own for a long time so I, I I feel far away from you know being an expert. There is so much to learn, and every episode there in Nomadic Business Inside, we are we're learning a lot. So it's just just a journey. It's a journey. And what how, how what about you? Have you been deciding so far that you will you launch your own podcast soon? That will be a topic for a different episode. <laughs> so Stay not, tuned. So not decided yet. <laughs> no, not decided yet. We'll see if somebody has any suggestions. I have a lot of ideas, but I guess I need time and energy and a kindergarten well, to help me with that <laughs> you'll get a lot of time and energy once this little girl is in the kindergarten yeah and with that i think we'll call it a wrap Thank, <sighs> thanks everyone for listening in it was a really fun episode and i'm excited for episode 10 coming right around the corner then we'll probably made it a couple of further valleys and mountains <laughs> and we'll go much more into our four topics absolutely and with that Ah, goodbye. Goodbye, everyone. (laughs) (laughs) That was not the finishing line I was expecting for. Come on, give us a better one. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, we'll we'll do with that. (laughs) This gets... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> now now it's pancake time hello all right let's call it a wrap goodbye guys bye guys